Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. We are coming at you on December 4th, 2020. Uh, looks like we're, you know, spiking in the uh, new COVID lockdowns and uh, a lot of other nonsense related to that. But before we get into any of the uh, topics, let me introduce you to our panel. So up in our upper left-hand corner, we have uh, Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in Liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. And up in our right-hand corner, we have our Screaming Eagle of Freedom, Tim Everett. He is a, a pilot in the state of California. And my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. I also wanted to take a moment to tell you that <coughs> um, if you uh, wanted to comment on the show or uh, um, if you had uh, any suggestions for future topics on our uh COVID lockdowns or, you know, people who've been affected by uh, riots or other such, uh, you can contact us at counterpoint at libertariancounterpoint.com. Um, if it's during the show, we may try and answer it in a bonus section at the end. Uh, but uh, certainly we are uh, more than interested in uh, interviewing anybody who's uh, been affected by COVID lockdowns uh, or also too, if you're uh, considering uh, exiting the state of California as well. We've interviewed a few people on that on the show, and we certainly look forward to understanding those perspectives going to the future. So <laughs> the uh, topics of the day, we are uh, you know, looking at uh, more, um, I guess, a spike in cases of COVID uh, around the world and in the country. And um, you know, that's uh, causing us to look more at uh, some uh, lockdowns, especially in some of the blue states. But one of the things that that brings up is the issue of vaccines. Um, so we've been hearing quite a bit about vaccines lately, that that's uh, something that's on the way. And one of the big questions that that brings up, especially from a libertarian perspective, um, is will people willingly take those vaccines? And if not, will the government make it mandatory? Um, we've heard a little bit recently, um, some of the presidents have talked about, past presidents rather, have talked about uh, taking these vaccines uh, live, I guess, on air to try and encourage this. I think pre former President Bush, Clinton, and Obama recently uh, have suggested they would. Um, so anyways, uh, you know, as far as issues of safety or any of those things, uh, you guys have any thoughts on, on this? Uh, you know, should people take these vaccines? And if they uh, don't willingly, should they be forced to? Uh, well, if I could go first, give Leon the last word. Uh, the uh, I, I don't think they would need to personally. Uh, I, I don't think they would go that, down that route. Uh, not sure about the legalities of it there. I, I think you could make, like has been discussed, it, uh, at least uh, in, in some of the uh, news articles and so on, that... Uh, you know they they can they can force uh, healthcare workers to uh, to to vaccinate and that kind of thing, uh, but a little uh, I don't think they're going to do the general uh, uh, forcing, and I don't think they would need to. Uh, I think enough people would voluntarily do it. There'll, there'll be some outliers <laughs> that, for whatever reason, think it's a conspiracy or think. Um, that they just don't want to is bad for them that kind of thing there'll be some of those but uh hey um if you are i mean i don't understand the logic behind saying that uh well you know you've got to do it because you could infect someone well get the vaccine then if you're worried about that right and then you'll be immune correct so so what do you care if your next door neighbor or your hairstylist doesn't get vaccinated if you got vaccinated then you're you're good to go you're not going to get it Correct. I mean, if I mean, if the vaccine really works, if it's safe <laughs> and effective, then it's not it's not you're not going to get it. And so uh, if your hairdresser uh, doesn't take the vaccine, then and they get covid, they're standing on top over the top of you messing with your hair and breathing all over you and COVID's entering your body, but your antibodies are there from the vaccine to fight it off. Uh, it could be from any other source and it will fight it off, right? So, so you know, so 
that that argument i've never understood it people can still do it about all kinds of stuff you know about vaccines you know these anti-vaxxers you know oh my god they don't want to get vaccinated well they're going to give it to someone well, if, you got vaccinated okay so anyway enough of that well tim real quick uh, as a, a sort of a rebuttal to that i guess a devil's advocate on this side but the oh. uh, uh the reason some of them uh, often attack the uh uh, notion of people saying that, hey, you took the vaccine, that should be good enough for you, is the issue of, I guess, some people, the vaccine maybe not being effective for, or they just simply can't take the vaccine. And so therefore they say, well, if you get to herd immunity, then the idea is that, you know, you'll protect those people too. Um, you know, from a libertarian perspective, I, I do have a bit of a problem with saying you, you've got to force a person to do something so you protect somebody else. You know, clearly, we <laughs> that hasn't stopped us from ruining people's lives economically. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah. So, anyways, uh, 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 Leon, did you want to jump in on this, sir? Well, I mean, there's there's a huge debate here that is ongoing. That is individual liberties versus versus uh, public health. Okay, but you know, in all cases, I am I tend to be an absolutist in the, in the sense that individual liberties must win. Now, I can see the precautions that we must take, but there is a huge externality in this thing in that, in the sense that if I have the disease, I could infect someone else. Sure, that can happen, but we can take the necessary precautions. But the problem it comes up is why do we have to only focus on this particular um, risk? Why? We have the common flu, which, which is a risk to, uh, I, I could endanger someone else if I do have the common flu. Nobody talks about shutting down the economy or nobody talks about forcing me to take to take some vaccine or anything like that. We drive our cars and, and God, God knows we can kill people doing that. Or every year on our freeways, 40, 4,500, 45,000 people die on our freeways and maybe a double that, double, double that amount get, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and a dub, double that amount get, um, get injured on the freeways. Why are we only focused on this risk? That is what I don't understand. So individual liberties must win. We can take the precautions and those who want to take the vaccine, they can take the vaccine. Those who do not wish to take the vaccine, they don't have to. All this conspiratorial nonsense about, oh, they're planning this, they're gonna control our lives. It's a bunch of junk. But individual liberties must win on this, on this point. We take the vaccine if we want to, we don't take it if we don't want to, that's it. There you go. <laughs> they, they, they're, um, uh, gosh, there was something I had on the top of my tip of my tongue on. <laughs> it wasn't COVID. It was <laughs> swimming pools. The dangers of swimming pools. Lots of people yeah. die in swimming pools every year. That's so right. You don't, you yeah, don't yeah. need a swimming pool. You, you could yeah. just cover them all up with dirt and nobody would die in a nobody swimming pool. Nobody would die. Yeah. yeah. But we'll die of something else. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm right. yeah. <laughs> well, I, actually, that 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 does uh, jog my memory on exactly what it was I wanted to jump in on. But uh, so so the idea though is that you know this has never really been quantified to us because, like you said, we have we get the flu every year. The flu comes through, and a certain number of people die. It's usually somewhere in the you know I don't know thirty thousand to sixty thousand range somewhere in there. Okay, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and so and and a certain amount of people die on the roads every year from driving, and yet we don't reduce the speed limit to fifteen or twenty miles an hour for everybody. So I mean, it, the, the question is, and this is what, what's never been brought up by sort of the science-minded people <clears throat> pushing all these lockdowns. But what is the quantification of when? we should, you know, be uh, taking away people's liberty and forcing them to vaccinate or forcing them to stay in their homes and shut down their businesses. I mean, we've certainly never seen a quantification of, you know, why a Walmart can stay open and a mom and pop business has to close. So, exactly. you know, and, and, exactly. and what, so why, you know, Sam Walton's family gets made wealthy or, you know, and, and it's not no knock against them specifically. They, they didn't cause these laws, but you know, why the government favors them as a winner and shuts down, you know, Joe, Joe Schmo down the street, you know, who just wants to make a buck selling pizzas or, or, you know, shoes or whatever. So oh, it's, cutting, cutting, cutting hairs. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but this is the problem. You know, I think this is something we have spoken about before. This is what happens when the government start 
picking winners and losers. The government start deciding what is essential and what is not. We are allowing football players and basketball players to jump around, dance around, dump, dunk a ball, and do all these sort of things. But a little guy down the street, and these guys are millionaires, most of them are. But this guy's down the, little guy down the street, running a little mom and pop show, cutting people here or doing whatever they do, and they can't open because they are big risk. They are big risk to society. What about them guys, the millionaires who 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 playing football and basketball out there? They are not a risk too. Yeah. This is madness. Yeah. We cannot let the government make these choices. Our liberties are being taken away and they'll be lost unless we stand up and say no to this crap. Yeah. Well, and, and certainly madness is the, the, the word, Leon, <laughs> of the day <laughs> and the word of 2020, I think. You know, uh, you hit the nail on the head there as far as uh, this stuff goes. And, and you know, but th that, that's the key issue is that, you know, nobody's ever made a quantification. It's just fear duck and hide now the government's told you to because fear yes. you know we yes. haven't had a quantification that says okay and you know when we get to x level this is why we're doing something and that that should really be a plan when you when that we should agree upon in advance not something that we just simply yeah. you know hysteria because the unknown you know i mean it, it, you know liberty is is something that we have to be uh, you know, brave enough to, to own. We can't simply have, you know, yeah, yeah, I guess liberty isn't really for the meek, I guess. And, and that's what we're finding right now. Yeah. But, you know, but, with you respect. Know, but, the, oh. but the point is, though, but the point is, though, it is fine for us to bow down to, the, to, to science, okay? In the sense that science has proven X, Y, Z, and we have to, you know, take whatever precautions we have to do because the science have indicated that. But this is not what's going on. What we are dealing with here is just arbitrary dictates of our government. Yeah. Look at their clothes in the schools, say, for instance, based upon what? Yeah. Based well, upon it, it, what? That is exactly what I wanted to get into for our next topic, Leon, is, you know, when we talk about these arbitrary ways that we're, we're, we're deciding what is when we shut down, who, who closes down. Uh, so essentially, Fauci early on had had come out and said that the schools needed to be closed, uh, you know, aside from all of his other arbitrary ma mandates where, you know, he said, uh, don't wear masks at the beginning of this. Then later on, he said, wear masks. And then uh, later on in an interview, he said, well, the reason he said that in the first place, uh, don't wear masks is because he wanted to preserve them for frontline yes. workers, which means he just flat out lied to everybody. <laughs> about the, well, what he believed the effectiveness of these things were anyways, which is just, you know, beyond the pale. But but regardless, um, it, you know, here's yet another issue that, uh, you know, where he had he's sort of flip flopped on this. He came out and he said initially that, you know, it was appropriate to close the schools. Now he has come out recently in the last few days and said the schools, he said, uh, open the schools, but uh, close the bars. So, you know, I, I, you know. Maybe the bars is another one of those arbitrary <laughs> things as well. Who knows? But certainly the schools, it's been shown in many places that kids are not really at much risk from this at all. I mean, we're talking about mm -hmm. one in a million, essentially, uh, uh, is, is the type of risk that they're, they have imposed upon them. And then uh, to, to boot, uh, it's also being told, uh, said that uh, they're not also likely to be high transmitters that seems hard to believe but i guess mainly it's because maybe they're just not that affected by it so they're not spreading it as much yeah. i guess but um but re regardless uh you know he's he's flip-flopped again and and uh, uh rand paul recently called him out on that on an interview uh, uh on a television interview and said hey what why did you say close them now and then not close them what's your rationale behind them and we don't really get a lot of rationale it's just simply exactly. you know uh, you know, danger, danger, uh, you know, uh, we shut everything down. At first it was flatten the curve. We flattened the curve, but we didn't really see an end to the lockdown. So I don't know. You guys have any thoughts on that too? No, first off, Fauci was fired. So I don't know why we even listened to that ignoramus in the first place. And second of all, the he could be coming from the, the data that is showing that schools uh, – are much safer to keep open and much, much better for the overall society. I uh, just read that uh, there's a new report. Can't remember the state, Maine, I think, where uh, the uh, test scores have dropped six times, so 600 uh, percent. The test scores uh, for the kids. I guess they still test them, even though they're at home. 
And so, uh, so there you go. Uh, you've got, uh, and they're at home. I guess they could cheat too, but they anyway. Um, so <laughs> you could you could make a case that bars are not as necessary as schools. I mean, you know, that's that's pretty easy case to make. So I can understand maybe how he, what reasons behind his flip flop. But the guy's just a moron to begin with. So uh, they, this new guy is is much better informed, uh, and and he should be listened to, not this Fauci. What do you think, uh, Leon? Well, well, this issue is the second big issue that Fauci Fauci was wrong on. Okay, first he, he the mass issue which you raised, Jason, and then he came up with this school issue which he was also wrong on. And Rand Paul was right. I, I looked at the video that he sent. Oh, Rand Paul was absolutely right. All of this is being done without science behind it. Okay? Yeah. Even this mask now, they're telling us, okay, we have to wear the mask. But we're wearing the mask and, 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 and what's happening to the, the COVID numbers? They, they, they're still rising. So there's something else going on within the whole society. Yes, we should take the precautions. Yes, we should social distance. And if we want to wear a mask, fine, we should wear it. But all over the place, they are mandating these things without science behind it. Yeah. And Fauci don't know what the hell he's talking about. I'm sorry, he doesn't. I know he's supposed to be this world-famous epidem epidemiologist or whatever the hell he is. <laughs> but he's just a politician. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah, he's just, he's a bureaucrat. That's all he's A bureaucrat, done. yes. You know, he's he's not a, a doctor that it goes out there and works and actually just been a bureaucrat. So he can just stuff it. And uh, uh, these... Uh, I lost my train of thought there. Oh, well, anyway. Um, <laughs> well, you, you know, Tim, I, I, I must have been sort of out of the loop in the last day or so. That Was Fauci fired in the last day or so? Or I, when, I thought, when yeah, yeah, by Trump. Okay. I mean, he's not okay. the, the head guy as far as Trump does. I thought it was this, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, yes. Um, yeah, you're right. It's, I don't know. I don't know if he was fired from the task force, but he was certainly removed. As the head guy, there's another the guy. guy uh, right. Yeah, they've got. I forgot this, his name. You're right. You're right. There's yeah. a, um, I'll, I'll check it and let you guys know. I, I don't right. remember. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, it, it, certainly yes, and uh, you know, the idea that there's any you know legitimate science to the idea that you know uh, you know these people, uh, these leaders who tell us uh, it's okay to go to a uh, <clears throat> you know to to a Walmart store and be around a whole bunch of other shoppers and the idea that they tell us it's okay to to attend essentially a riot or a you know peaceful protest without yes. a mask and a bullhorn and be surrounded by people as we've seen many of these leaders i believe garcetti and uh Lori lightfoot and some of these others they just you know and, and yet they're very comfortable shutting other people down you know from worship yeah. we'll talk <laughs> about that in another show as well but uh uh, well, I, I think I remember what I was going to say. The the mask wearing compliance rate across the United States is 88 percent. Last I checked, yeah. and okay. so uh, and so there's there's all these precautions being made, and this virus is so virulent that it will infect you. I don't care if you're wearing your your dumb mask. I mean, they're, they're certainly not an N, properly fitted N95 mask that's been changed out every two hours. There are all these weird, you know, uh, band, bandanas and loose fitting masks that fog your, if, if, if a mask can fog your glasses, <laughs> what is that coming out of the mask that's fogging your glasses, may I ask? It is water vapor. And if you have COVID, that water vapor is filled with the virus. Okay. So, um, it's just nonsense in a sense. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's never going to get to the point where we're wearing properly fitted, properly, uh, disposed of on a regular basis, N95 masks. It's just, it's just impossible at the, you know, at any point. I mean, unless you're Japan maybe, but, uh, uh, it, it doesn't matter this stuff, you're going to get it. And that's the whole problem now. Uh, and, and it's going to kill people. Okay, so uh, you know what to do about that, and and do it in a realistic fashion that doesn't eviscerate whole industries. Even Southwest just uh, let everybody know that for the first time in its history, it's going to be laying people off. All right. So yes. yeah, thirty eight hundred or or some some number like that. 
And, yeah. uh, you know, it's just, uh, I mean, I can tell too. I mean, they, I used to have to wait in line to depart from San Diego in the morning uh, for sometimes 20, 30 minutes, just getting, I call it the conga line. And you get in there and you slowly move into your position to take off. It can take a long time. Well, late, I've been just taxiing out and off I go because there's nobody else there. I'm telling you, you know, it's eviscerated. The aviation, uh, at least the passenger side, is eviscerated right now. Yeah. And it's just yeah. going to, and it ain't going to get better anytime soon, I don't think. But anyway. Well, as long as, long as government making their edicts without, without science or anything behind it, it ain't going to get better anytime soon. Yeah. You're absolutely correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, speaking of other things that we seem to be having a hard time measuring, uh, the uh, uh, real quick, uh, the uh, before we get to the end of the show, the results of the election. You know, there's been a lot of issues of potential fraud. Uh, we've certainly seen a lot of individual cases. Certainly, it looks like there might be fraud here and there, and the Trump team is trying to uh, go to court with. Uh, you know, different pieces of evidence to show that. Well, one piece of evidence, it just surfaced, and I, I thought this was certainly noteworthy. Uh, uh, they aired it yesterday on a few different channels, uh, but was uh, Georgia's Fulton County, uh, they, they claimed they had a leaky pipe during the vote counting, and yes. uh, the video footage, there was, I guess, video footage of the counting room that was uh, going on. And so a uh, person who was in charge came around telling everybody, OK, we got to shut down. There's a leaky pipe. Everybody get out of the building. And so all of the poll watchers were sent out. And uh, that means the people, you know, who were supposed to be looking for, you know, inconsistencies to, to make sure essentially that the election is legitimate. That's the whole purpose those people were there. So after they left the room, the video shows they pulled boxes of uh, ballots suitcases. out from suitcases, suitcases, suitcases. Of ballots out from underneath tables that they had been stored under and started counting. <laughs> and these were, you know, the people who, you know, just told everybody to go home yeah. and, you know, we, we need to, you know, we have a leaky pipe. And of course, that leaky pipe, I don't think has ever been documented. I don't think they've ever been able, anybody's ever been able to verify that leaky pipe. But certainly uh, I advise people, if you're interested, go look for that video. Who knows how much this could have affected an election? I don't know if this is in the thousands or tens of thousands of votes, mm -hmm. but it's clearly... Uh, it's clearly fraud. Somebody should go to jail for something like this. I mean, the idea, I, I don't see how you can cut it any other way. You tell people to go home and that you can't count and then you start counting. Okay. That, that's the law. Yeah. Those people are supposed to be there to make sure, to ensure our sovereignty, uh, our, uh, oh, what's the word, our uh, in, enfranchise. Integrity. Integrity. Yeah. Integrity of our elections. Yeah. yeah. So, you, um, you know, I would have, I would have no problem if Joe Biden won this election fair and square. I wouldn't like the result, but if he won it fair and square, I have no problem whatsoever, okay? When Obama won, I didn't like the result, but I had no problem with it because as far as we know, it was a relatively clean election. Both of, both of elections were relatively clean. But here we have this particular election. There are so many oddities in this election. You can, I will probably take up a whole show trying to describe them all. So at one time I was willing to give everybody the benefit of a doubt. Oh, well, you know, maybe this could be explained. Maybe there are innocent explanations here or innocent explanations there. But what we have now is a mountain of affidavits sworn on a penalty of perjury of criminal conduct. Then we have this video that shows criminal conduct. There's no doubt about it. Yesterday in Nevada, we have testimony, proof, dead people voted. About 40,000 people double voted. We had um, people, people um, there was something, some, other, some other category of illegal voting in, right here in Nevada. Yeah. Hey, has, has it actually been proven though yet, Leon, or had they just made the allegation and, and not proven it yet in court? I'm not 40, sure. 40,000 people who double vote, who, um, the 40, no, the outer state voters, I think, is proven. 40,000 yeah. outer state voters voted. And Joe Biden only won by um, by 33 or 34,000 votes. So there's a lot of stuff going on out here that I can no longer give the benefit of the doubt. I think Donald Trump have a very good case to contest every one of these states that Joe Biden supposedly won, especially the six critical states that in, that in play right now. Well, I see we have not collected for Joe. I better shut up for the time being. Sorry, Tim. I, I... No, that's that's good. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, that's the uh, we're getting near the end of the show now, and that's the sound for our knucklehead noise patrol. Certainly, uh, you know, the election sovereignty is something we'll continue to follow. But uh, uh, getting back to, you know, our knucklehead noise patrol, something where we like to end it with something really stupid or silly that some politician or somebody else in the media has said uh, lately. And uh, you, you bringing us back to what we started the show on, you know, these uh, sort of knuckleheads that are uh, sending us on the lockdown. Uh, L.A. County Supervisor Sheila Cool uh, votes to she voted to shut down restaurants due to the dangers they impose. Um, and uh, here's what she actually said when she did that vote. Uh, she said it's a bit of magical thinking on everybody's part to think that it, uh, that any restaurant anywhere uh, that the server keeps a six foot distance from the table. <clears throat> so she said that then she further went on to say that outdoor dining is probably more dangerous in terms of contagion than any other kind of business. So she that's the, and then and she, she that that vote went down three to two in Los Angeles County uh, to shut the restaurants. And that means outdoor dining, too. And she was one of those votes to shut it down. So essentially a decisive vote. What did she do after making this vote she, and telling us this was the most dangerous activity that, you know, uh, any business uh, could be engaged in? She went out to eat <laughs> at her favorite restaurant and she was caught and her her uh, staff went on to say that, well, it was her favorite restaurant and she just wanted to let them know personally and she felt bad for them. I mean, you know, at what point, I, I you know, what point are we going to roll out the guillotines? <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> uh, gosh. Uh, well, um, yeah. I, what happened to the mass? Uh, the servers wear masks and the, the whole premise, of course, which is probably all faulty as we realize this uh, virus is extremely uh, contagious, uh, is <clears throat> that if you're within six feet, you just wear a mask and everything's a okay, right? I mean, that's what they've been telling us for the last year almost, not yes. quite. And uh, so, uh, you know, when you go out to to the restaurant, yes, you're not wearing your mask because you're you're trying to eat a meal. So you're you're around your little table, and along comes the server. They have a mask, right? So they're within six feet of you. And they have a mask and all the other patrons are supposedly either separated by at least six feet or they are there's there's barriers set up and all this kind of stuff. Right. OK. And sometimes they're outside. Now she's saying outside it's even it's terribly dangerous. Well, OK. So. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, what, what's what's the big deal if the if the server is wearing a mask? Why can't they especially outside? But anyway. Wait, wait, but and then of course she goes out and eats. Yeah, well, that's that's par for the course, obviously, from what we've seen from these little miniature Napoleons. Yes, or in, I guess in her case, she would be a a, a miniature um, oh Cleopatra or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've just about reached the end of the show. Thanks for bringing us into for a landing on that topic, Tim. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Maybe in the overtime, but I think we might have had a question for overtime. But uh, uh, so uh, if, if you're listening live, stick around and we'll answer that question. But uh, as far as the live show goes or the uh, recorded show, thank you all for joining us again for Libertarian Counterpoint. Um, we hope to catch you at the next one. You can see our shows at uh, libertariancounterpoint.com. Uh, Facebook Libertarian Counterpoint, um, and uh, on public access in Sacramento as well. Uh, thanks so much, and we will uh, look forward to seeing you at the next one. Yep. Bye. See you soon. Yeah. Okay. We are now in the overtime portion of our show on December 4th, uh, 2020, and we had a question come in, and it says, uh, I'm trying to live my life. I condemn compulsory public. And this is from uh, uh, Wasiji Joram uh, uh, Kian Yojo. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. He has an awesome icon there of Milton Friedman. So I don't care, you know, what, <laughs> what his name is or where he's from. You know, he's, he's, he's got from on. Uganda. He's, got on Uganda. <laughs> yeah, he's from Uganda. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, um, you know, it's, it's funny, you know, this is one of these things I, I hope we can get a, a guest on in the future to talk about, you know, uh, a little more about what's going on with Liberty and other parts of the world, especially around COVID. Um, you know, certainly, uh, you know, uh, maybe we might reach out, uh, uh, you know, to have a little more, uh, you know, a few more guests on this in the future, but, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's terrible. The stuff that's happening in this country, as far as, uh, shutting people down. I mean, without it, just taking away Liberty for trading it for fear, literally, because we're, there's yeah. not much science behind it. And, uh, you know, it, I'm sure that this is pretty bad in other places in the world too. Do you guys have any, uh, any thoughts to uh, share? We are supposed to be the land of the free and the home of the brave. We are not free right now, and we are not being very brave about it. We need to go out there and stop these people from doing what they're trying to do to us. They're trying to tell us to stay at home when, when we, could, we probably could still be going out there with necessary precautions. They're trying to tell us that the Thanksgiving we can't have certain people over. They want to reach into our homes and tell us what we should or should not do. Something is wrong here. We are losing our liberties. We are losing our associated freedoms. And if we don't do something about it, we're not going to like the country that we'll be living in in a few years. We better stop this and stop this fast. Yeah. Uh, oh, Robert. Well, yeah, I, I can't really add much to that. That's that's good stuff, Leon. Well, let me let me read Robert's question then. So Robert DeMadera, a, a past guest on our show, um, he has a question. Uh, we don't see uh, from all causes uh, uh, than uh, expected, despite being in a uh, nine-month deadly pandemic. Um, has there been a pandemic in history that didn't add to the yearly trend of deaths? Wow. I, I don't know the history behind it, so I, I wouldn't know. Uh, yeah, but that's a good question. Uh, if, if it's so bad, it should skew the numbers in, uh, in, in a bad way, and it and yeah, we have it. I, I'm not sure if that's worldwide or if that's just in the United States or, or what. But yeah, the the total numbers of deaths has not risen. Um, and so, what's going on there? Uh, maybe <laughs> I don't know. Well, good question I, though. It's a it's a good question, but I do believe I do believe the Spanish flu, uh, which was in 1918 to 1920 did cause a spike in the number of deaths in the United States and worldwide. I believe that is mm -hmm. true. I'll have to check to make sure. But um, yeah. but I think that's probably the only yeah. case in history that I'm aware of. Or maybe the Black Plague in yeah. Europe. Maybe the Black yeah. Plague in Europe did, did, did uh, yeah. cause spike in deaths. Yeah. So, this, the sad thing about the Black Plague in Europe is we can't really compare, you know, loss of liberty necessarily here as to, to what was going on there because that was such a different right. time. But things right. like the Spanish flu and other things, you know, that have hit us in the last century, I, I don't think we've ever uh, addressed anything in this uh, totalitarian type of, of, of way where people yeah. just send edicts down, you know, from from on top, they, they yell safety and then they tell us, shut down your business, uh, stay at home, don't talk to your relatives. I mean, the idea that you could have a dying relative in a hospital and be told that you cannot go in to see them is You're just right. absolutely beyond the pale. And this isn't like a special case where, you know, God, somebody's got you know, Ebola or something like that. And they're, they, they're, they're worried about, you know, somehow them taking it out of the hospital and, and, and just outbreaking to the rest of the country. And this is something where, you know, there's lots and lots of people who are being affected by this, you know, where, so it's not like the, the cat's out of the bag, I guess, you know, it's not like one person has COVID in the country and, you know, they got them in a room and they don't want to, you know, risk that spreading through the rest of the country. It's, it's already out there. You know? <laughs> it would be like the flu. Exactly. You know? exactly. can, can you imagine if, if, say, if, well, if your grandmother had the flu and they said, sorry, you can't go in to see her, even though she may be on her deathbed because, you know, the flu, it's, it's just, we, we can't risk anybody else. You know, uh, any, any of the five of your 10 neighbors who don't have the flu getting the flu. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just uh, obscene. I don't know. It's, it's, it, it is just, it is just, it all comes back to the exercise of our freedoms, the exercise of our liberty. It all comes back to that in, in the sense that, in the sense that government are making these edicts without science, without 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 any constitutional authority to do so, 
I mean, I'm glad. I was very glad to see the um, the Supreme Court slap down um, Andrew Cuomo. I think we'll talk about that in, in yeah, about religious really sure. gathering. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's yeah. just it's, yeah. it's just that government is acting so arbitrarily, and and we are just supposed to bow down like little sheep and servants, and this is yeah. a problem. Not, not only that, but we watch the shepherds uh, sit there and engage in all the activity they're telling the sheep. No, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tim, I cut you off there. Well, I, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, uh, it's so politicized that I'm going to politicize it even more. I, I'm still expecting that when Joe Biden gets sworn in to be president, all of a sudden, all of a sudden those puppy tails wag faster, kitties purr louder, and COVID goes away. All of a sudden, <laughs> sunshine and lollipops for everyone. So we'll see. Maybe I'm totally you. You forgot net case. Maybe you I'm forgot. Under- you forgot. You forgot. The sky will be bluer. Tim. Yeah, sky, sky's bluer. Sun's <laughs> brighter. Yep. Uh, clouds are whiter. Everything's hunky dory now that Joe Biden is our man has delivered us from Donald Trump. Praise yeah. the praise the Lord God, yeah. Joe Biden. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah if, remember, the people he's appointing are literally superheroes. <laughs> that's, that's right. right. That's right. right. Yeah. They are. Well, they yeah, at least at least they are superheroes in reality to the military industrial complex that has, Yeah, I guess uh, that's true. They superheroes. deliver in a big way. <laughs> they, deliver. they deliver and uh, you're never going to forget it either. Yeah. <laughs> if you live in a foreign nation in a Muslim land, especially Yemen, uh being starved to death. Thank you very much. But Trump continued that too. So, yeah. you know, just to be Wait. fair, yeah. Yeah. Although I will say that at least, uh, you know, with Trump, the it doesn't sound like he's really expanded it. And he's at least made a few moves toward a, rhetorically towards and and I guess in, in a real way, moving a few troops out, I, I guess, it, you know, that last move he talked about making uh, reducing the numbers in Afghanistan by, Afghanistan, I think, yeah, a little more than half, I think, you know, before leaving yeah. office, which made everybody angry, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it made all the superheroes angry. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean that's that's the best thing he could do at this uh, point, at least late, but at least he could. But uh, yeah, and then he's. But on the other hand, he has um, uh, enjoined his uh, military advisors on a best first strike po- potentiality for Iran, and he did one other thing. Can't remember what it is, but anyway, he's looking into first strike on Iran. I mean, it's like seriously, what's you know? It, he's just so he's. Yeah. He's just all over the place. Exactly. You know, yeah. and, you know, and well, oh, I, I, well I think of yeah. I think of Trump as a little bit of a loose cannon. He's sometimes he's pointed at the bad guys, and sometimes yeah. he's pointed at the hull of your ship. Exactly. But you know, you look at Biden, and all the time he's pointed at the hull of your ship. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, you know, I don't know. Jason, Jason, I don't know if Biden doesn't even know where he's pointing. Quite frankly, you know. So. <laughs> You know, well, the, the people who are aiming him are always pointing. Yeah, <laughs> oh, okay. yeah they move him around. Yeah. Get him this way. Get him. Okay, yeah. there you go. Oh, yeah. Over there. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the only thing about, you know, we talk about Biden assuming the presidency. If this thing in Georgia, if this thing, no, this thing in Georgia looks like it was well planned, okay? Let's face it. It was well yeah. planned. It yeah. just happened that they got caught. But it was well planned. There's no doubt about that. So if this thing is really the tip of an iceberg of a major conspiracy in this election, Joe Biden will not take the presidency. And I hope that is what happens out to be, because I believe there's too much evidence of something went wrong on election on election night. Seriously. Yeah. And, and I, I can't speak to all the other things, but clearly that incident in Georgia there, it, it you know, I, I can't see how you could not think a crime has been committed there. I mean, and this really, and that's the word I was looking for earlier in the show was suffrage. I mean, this this really, um, this really erodes the suffrage of all of us, you know, in yeah. this country. When you know, you got people who literally are stuffing the ballot box and, uh, uh, you know, forcing the people out who are supposed to be looking in and and uh, ensuring uh, that this is a free and fair election. But, uh, but this, anyways, but you know. this is the problem. But this is the problem. We are we are beginning 
to reach a point where we are endorsing lawlessness in the land. That's what we are doing. Because if we're going to allow this thing, this thing in Georgia to, to just go by, we say, okay, well, you know, well, it was a little bit of mistakes here and mistakes there. That's not the point. That's not the point. Every time we allow an illegal vote, we are disenfranchising one legal vote. That's what we are doing. All of us are, are the victims of these people and their horrible work on election night. That's what we do. We are victims. Yeah. The injustice was done to us. Yeah. Yep. Very true. Yeah. I think let's, let's, uh, it, it's, it doesn't seem like we have any other comments. So let's leave it there. Leon, you got the last word today in Liberty and <laughs> um, we'll wrap up this overtime and we got another show to do. So we will see you all at the next one. Uh, thanks so much for joining us on our overtime today and, um, you know, stay strong out there. Stay free. Thank you.